Hello, Letting Friend. Today I'm going to share every journal that I own to help you decide which journal might be the right fit for you. Before I show you my complete journal inventory, let's start with some questions to ask yourself as you're deciding what journal to get. Because I know with all the different journals out there, it can be really overwhelming to even know where to start. Number one, probably the most important, what kind of pens will you be using in your journal? Since I do a hand lettering journal, I use brush pens and I want to make sure I have the option of smooth paper. And this is actually one of the reasons I didn't start a journal for so long. I was so afraid of using the wrong paper with my brush pens. I used HP premium 32 paper for a long time and I still use it to print out practice pages. But now I like that my lettering can be contained in a journal instead of endless loose sheets. And I don't want you to be afraid to start a hand lettering journal because you're worried about your pens. So there are lots of things you can do, even if you don't have smooth paper in your journal, and I will get into all of that. Number two, how thick are the pages? So my very first journal, it was going to be a bullet journal, ended up learning hand lettering, and then it was a practice book, but the pages ghosted a lot because they were so thin. Later on, I found Archer and Olive and the paper is so much thicker. I can paint a full page with acrylic paint and nothing bleeds through on the other side. Number three, is it easy to letter in? What kind of binding do you like? Do you want it to lay flat or do you like a spiral binding so it can fold over? It's totally a personal preference. And number four, what size do you like? Do you like a regular A5 size or do you want it to be a little bit smaller? It can fit in your purse or do you like something really large so you can do some really big designs? Number five, what do you want on the paper? Do you want it to be lined or a dot grid or blank? And does the coloring matter? Do you want a journal that has some designs already in it with quotes and colors? Do you care if the pages are a little more creamy yellow or do you want them to be super bright white? Or do you want a pink journal like this one and also black paper? There's so many different things you can do with all different types of colors of journals. Now, as I get into my journal inventory, I just want to remind you of the best advice start with what you have. You don't need to have the perfect or most expensive journal to start. If you have a notebook lying around, start with that and get a feel for what things you're looking for. We're all different. So we all may like different things and we need different journals for different uses. You're only going to discover the things that you like and don't like about journals as you are getting started for yourself. All right, let's get into my journal inventory. So these are journals that I've just collected over the years. Some are completed, some are not. Hopefully this will help you see which journals you like and which ones you shouldn't buy. Number one, Rhodia notepads. These are my number one recommendation because the paper is so smooth and they're really inexpensive. I love that there are so many different options for binding and size and what's on the paper. I personally like the dot grid the best. I tried this Rhodia web notebook and although the paper really is super smooth, it's a little more creamy yellow than I like and the pages aren't thick so there's a lot of ghosting. And I also got this notebook with the spiral on the top. That helps me to not feel like I have to use up every page. I only use one side of the page and that works a lot better for me with all of the ghosting that there is. Even with the ghosting, I still love using Rhodia notepads because the paper is so smooth. You can use it to practice with your brush pens and it's not gonna ruin them at all. Rhodia notepads really are the best. Number two, Strathmore Bristol Visual Journal. This one is a new discovery for me, so I haven't started using it yet, but it's the same paper as my favorite blending paper. I've been getting the Strathmore Smooth Bristol paper in this yellow notepad. Then one day I realized that they have it in the journal form and I got really excited and I bought it right away. I'm excited to dive into it. This is the best paper for blending because it allows the ink to sit on top of the paper as you blend instead of soaking it in right away. And because it's so smooth, you can blend your brush pens directly on it without worrying about them fraying. It's kind of like watercolor paper, but without the rough texture. 
So it really is perfect for blending brush pens. You can see some of the examples that I have from the past where I've blended on this paper. So now I am really excited to have it in the journal form. Number three, a watercolor journal. And I'm also adding a mixed media journal, which I'm going to show you in a minute. There are all kinds of watercolor journals out there with nice binding, but I just bought this Canson spiral watercolor notepad and I am excited to start using it. So maybe you want to dip your feet into watercolor or maybe you just like the textured look of ink on watercolor paper. And if you like the idea of watercolor, but you don't want to invest in all of the watercolor paints, you actually can use your brush pens as ink and use a water brush to get that really beautiful watercolor lettering. You don't have to worry about your brush pen spraying on the rough watercolor texture paper. I do have some watercolor, but I actually prefer this method over pulling out all of my watercolor paints. A couple of years ago, I used this mixed media journal and you can't get as much watercolor on the pages. They do tend to warp a little bit because mixed media is a little bit thinner, but it's also a little bit smoother. It's still really rough for your brush pens, but it's kind of in between. It worked well to have some watercolor backgrounds to my lettering. Number four is a collage journal. I bought this Stillman and Burn journal because I read that it was super smooth and I was trying to find some really smooth journals to use with brush pens. It is true that this one is really smooth paper and it's really gentle on your brush pens. I experimented with a few of my brush pens and I didn't love the way that the brush pen ink sunk into the paper and with my Karen markers, it kind of feathered out quite a bit. And this journal wasn't that cheap either, so it didn't seem worth it just for the smooth paper. However, because this is really thick paper, it worked great as a collage journal. It accidentally turned into that, and now I love it so much. I had no idea that I would love collaging, but I was glad to have a journal that wouldn't warp with a lot of glue. And the fact that it's spiral binding means that it can open up as I'm adding so much into the journal. If you want a full flip through of this collage journal, please let me know. I had so much fun with it. And another journal I've been using for collaging is this one I found on Amazon. I'll put it in my Amazon favorites linked below. It's pretty cool because it has colors and designs printed right on the pages. I thought it would be really fun to try it with lettering, but I haven't actually done a lot of lettering in it. I mostly fill it with stickers and washi tape, and it's kind of like a junk journal in that way, even though I haven't really gotten much into junk journaling besides this. The paper isn't thick, so the ink does ghost a lot and kind of bleeds through, which is why it's perfect for stickers instead. And it's nice to have a journal where something is already on the page, so I'm not starting with a completely blank page when, you know, sometimes that feels overwhelming to start with a complete blank page. So I've been enjoying this one. Maybe I'll have to share a full flip through when I finish all of it. Number five, homemade mini journal. You can actually make your own mini journal and use any paper you want. And it just takes one sheet of paper. I have a whole video on this and even a free mini course where I teach the basics of hand lettering while helping you create your own mini journal. I like to use HP premium 32 paper. I've made a bunch of these with different kinds of pictures. I've gifted them to a lot of different people. My toddler loves to look through them. I carry them in my bag, so they're getting a little bit damaged, but they are perfect when I need something really quick to entertain her when we're out and about. I've also added these to my journal. So I have one that's more of an accordion style. And then I also have one that is the regular style and I just glued it in. So it's kind of a fun way to have an interactive journal inside your journal. So if you're interested in learning how to make these, like I said, I will link that below. Number six, notebook therapy. I bought this journal because I was thinking I need to test out all the different types of journals out there only to realize there are way too many to try out and I need to just use the ones that I have first. So I'm actually going to be sending this one on to someone who can use it right now. It feels like it's just as good quality as Archer and Olive. I have lots of empty Archer and Olive journals and those are the ones that I'm going to want to use first. 
I'm going to show you all of those in a little bit. This notebook therapy journal was about the same cost of a journal in the same size of Archer and Olive. So honestly, if you want a really fancy journal, you could get either one and be happy. And I'm sure lots of other companies as well. My only complaint about this one is that when I bought it, the description said that it's a pink coral and I was surprised when it came that it's more of a dark mauve. It's still really pretty and I love the gold design on it. It's just not what I was expecting and that can happen whenever you buy something online. So before getting into my stash of Archer and Olive journals, I'm going to show you some random ones. So for number seven, random journals, I have a few different sections here. My first one is this composition notebook and I just got it at Walmart. It was going to be a bullet journal back in 2016 until I discovered hand lettering and then everything became about hand lettering and I forgot completely about bullet journaling. And that's what I mean when I say start with what you have. If that's all you have, you can definitely start a hand lettering journal in exactly that. And the next one is this crazy wonderful journal. This one I have shared a lot on my channel in the past. The front page just spoke to me that it was what I needed at the time. I found it at Tuesday morning. I love the different colors of the pages and the cute designs and quotes. And because I love this one so much, I was just trying other journals from TJ Maxx and Tuesday morning. They have a great cute journal section. However, I learned that not every journal feels good to hand letter in. So these ones have thin paper and I prefer the dot grid over lined. I still think these ones are beautiful. So they are for when I'm actually writing in my journal. I'm not consistent with actual journal writing, but there are times I just need to get my thoughts out on a paper and it helps me process really strong emotions. So that's what these ones are used for. Here is one that I got from Disneyland. This is the one souvenir I chose to bring home. It is lined and I usually don't like lined pages, but you know, it's Disney. It doesn't stay open very well. <laughs> so it's not the most perfect journal for hand lettering, but I think it would be really fun to do a challenge where I fill this journal with hand lettering Disney quotes. It's just so cute. And another random thing I have are these mini binders. I like small lettering, so I wanted to try these. However, I haven't felt the urge to use them yet, so we'll see if I actually will. I have a lot of other journals that I want to use first, so we'll see. And number eight, finally, my Archer and Olive journals. I have a lot of these. I feel like I was a little late to the game in starting these, but now I'm fully on board with them. I love them. They are definitely more expensive. The paper is smooth enough and really thick, so there's rarely ghosting. The designs are all really beautiful, and I have some with the linen cover and some with the vegan leather cover. I've learned that the linen gets dirty. I'm okay with the spots that I have on these journals. But in the future, I'm going to try to only buy vegan leather covers. And that's just my personal preference. With the vegan leather covers, I've noticed that some of the printing on it wore off just a little bit. But I don't mind that. I would rather have that than having dirty spots on the linen cover. There are all different sizes to choose from. I have a lot of the A5 size, which is five and a half by eight inches. I've also tried the A6 size, which is about four by six, and I have the eight by eight size. The four by six size, it felt a little bit weird to me. I think I liked the A5 size better than this one. And I don't always love large lettering, but there was something about the A5 size that just felt a little bit better than the A6 size. And I'm currently almost about to finish the 8x8 square journal, and that's been an interesting size for sure. I'll have to share more when I do a full flip through of that one. I have a black one that I'm excited to dive more into it will be fun to explore my metallic pens and other pens that can go on black paper. I also have a pink one and I love this one so much. The paper is pink and so cute. It's definitely for specific designs because not everything can be on pink paper, but it is fun to have this one. I also just recently got this pocket size one on the Archer and Olive warehouse sale. 
This one is three and a half by five inches. So we'll see if that's good for mini lettering. I couldn't justify the cost for that tiny of a journal, except it was on the warehouse sale. So we'll see if it's any good. And here's the recap. I hope this helped you. And just a reminder to start with what you have. And if you're curious how I store all these journals, I have this plastic bin. They all fit right now. So the goal is I can't get any more until I use up some of the ones that I have. We'll see how that goes. And if you liked this journal inventory video, you might like the rest of my brush pen inventory videos. Here's a playlist for you. So I hope that helps you know what pens might be a good fit for you as you are deciding which journals are a good fit as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you there.